Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Now we have a 2007 Toyota Corolla and essentially what's happening is sometimes, and it's kind of random, the car will not start. Now I've spoke to the customer and I'm not really expecting a parasitic draw and the reason why that is is because it's not really doing it overnight. What's happening is he's driving it, he could be driving for half an hour, an hour, he parks somewhere, does a bit of shopping, comes back out and the car doesn't start. So, and it's, it does start in the morning sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So, um, or no, actually, sorry, it mainly starts in the morning. It, it's only as he's kind of driving. So I'm not expecting a parasitic draw in this particular case because of what's happening. I'm really suspecting the battery. When you look at the battery, you'll see how old it is. We can also see some build up there. Now I want people to tell me in the comments down below why that build up happens. So you can pretty much be certain in this case that at the end of the day, look, it's a battery. Even if it's not a battery, that battery is really old and it's going to need changing anyway. Because again, if you can't, you can't do any like diagnostics or anything without having a good power source. You know, you, you really do need it. So this battery is going to be changed. Now we are going to test it, but as you can see, it is just old. It's most probably not so much the genuine one, but I guarantee you that's, you know, more than five six years old maybe more so look that battery is shot but we will test it but before you actually test it do not clean it now you can see all the build up and stuff on there and you know the connections aren't great now what i mean by do not clean it if you clean that and everything tests okay you're going to be chasing your tail where it could just be you know the actual battery itself so i'm not going to clean it first i'm just going to put the uh the tester on it the mictonics dss 5000 and we're going to test it first then i might clean it and test it after. but i want like a baseline to know you know is it a battery or is it just basically bad connections because if i clean it first i take all them connections off clean it put it all back on and then test it and it's testing perfect and i can't find any issue well it could have been the connections all along and then you're just chasing your tail you might spend three or four hours looking at something and it's not it was always the connections in the first place so don't clean anything first i know that might sound counterintuitive but believe me don't do it because if you do and you fix the problem well then you're never going to know and you're going to be spending hours on a car charging a customer and getting nowhere and no one's going to be happy at the end of the day but like i said look at the end of the day this is going to most probably be a simple battery change but what can it be well let's think about it yes possibility parasitic draw draining the battery 100 percent. and if it's been draining the battery for too long it's going to have damaged the battery no matter if the battery is new or old it could be a battery problem it could be the wire between the battery and the alternator or it could even be an alternator so they're really the issues we're looking at and with the uh, battery tester we can basically test all them uh, apart from the parasitic drawer we can test the uh, we can test the battery we can test the the lead between the alternator and the battery because uh, we can put the amp clamp on it and we can actually see if it's, you know, if the alternator is actually putting out. And then obviously we can also uh, check the alternator charging system, which will also check the wire of the alternator, if that makes sense. So that kind of, you know, rather just with one machine, we can test all this very, very quickly and, you know, say, yes, it's this, this or that. But let's be honest it's going to most probably be the battery. Now I've said that on video, I guarantee you it won't be. It just, as soon as I said it, it just won't be. That battery most will be absolutely 100% perfect, even though it looks like it's, you know, two and car moon's uh, battery for his uh, horse and car. So there we go. Let's get the battery tester out and test it. Sorted. Oh yes. Also, starter motor. Could be a starter motor issue. Right, I need to explain what I said there maybe a bit better. Yes, clean the connections here. So when you put your clamps on, you've got good connections between your clamps and the battery. But what I mean is don't take your battery clamps off and clean all the posts and stuff. Don't do any of that yet because then you won't know if you've actually fixed the original problem. Do you see what I'm saying? So what we're going to do is we're going to put the battery uh, tester on it. And we're going to set this up so we can see the battery obviously check the alternator and we'll check the cut uh, the amps going through so we can essentially check the three things in this machine very very quickly and very fast 
sorted. I'm guessing maybe a bad cell or something in the battery. Now, if there is a bad cell in the battery, our machine will tell us. So let's get it connected and see what it says. Right, so I've got my battery connected. I put in my information. It's an EN, it's a 300 um, cranking amps and it's a 45 amp hour battery. So now we just need to hit continue. Oh, I have to put in the uh, number plate. I'm just gonna put anything in just because it's the video. So we just click continue, take a picture. So we get the proper heat of the battery. Boom. It's now putting the load on the battery. Hopefully you can hear that little toaster spinning. You get you in a bit more typical. As soon as I did that, all the vehicles are coming past. But anyway, so it's doing that. It is loading up the battery. Right, it's telling us to charge and then recheck it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Right, what we're gonna do is we're going to check the rest of the system first, just to make sure the alternator and everything is okay. It's telling me to make sure my amp clamp is off, so it's gonna zero my amp clamp. Then it's telling me to, oh. Then it's telling me to connect the amp clamp. Oh, you can see it there. Right, so I've done that. I'm inside the vehicle because this machine comes apart so we can be inside the vehicle. Start engine. Starts okay. Let's just turn off the loads. Ensure all loads are off. Yep. Let it go through its test. Rev up the engine. Return to idle. Let it return, press next. Turn everything on, so we turn all our full beams on. We'll turn our blowers on. Click next. Rev the engine up. All the revs. Let it return to idle. Switch everything off. Now, as we can see, nothing wrong with our cranking. We can see that the uh, alternator can actually supply what we need, so that's all good. Our ripple, now our ripple is still okay, but you can see there is peaks in it, but there's no dropouts, but 
our alternator is you know the 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 ac part of the alternator or the diodes are worn now i, I did in one video say 50 millivolts is kind of limited it just it just depends on your car some cars can take more some cars can't it just it kind of depends on your car but once you start getting up on that you know you 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 know the, the, it's worn let's put it that way it's not it's not broken but it's worn you, you know this is this is a good thing about these you can actually tell you know the condition of things you're not basically guessing it is you know it's old it's the original one on the car it's done 326,000 kilometers you know so you're going to expect a bit of wear at the end of the day it's not bad but it's you can see it's it's actually wear. so what we're going to do now is we're happy enough with that and i'm happy enough that the um the alternator is good I'm happy enough that the wiring is good. We'll just put send results. We'll just print that to our printer. Just because we can. Right, what I've just done is I've just put the amp clamp around it again. I've just turned on my lights and I just want to monitor that uh, essentially you know the, the even though we know it's okay but I'm just doing it for the video as well and you can actually see that the alternator is pumping out plenty of amps this battery is slightly undercharged and the loads are on but as you can see the alternator is more than capable of pumping that out now what does that tell us well it tells us that the alternator is okay it also tells us our wires are okay because if our wires wasn't okay we wouldn't be getting that voltage if you're concerned that it's your wires, just back probe right at the alternator. If the alternator is kicking it out, but then it's not going to the battery, the only thing in between that is the leads. So, we're directly at the battery, it just gives us a better indication that our leads are okay and our alternator is okay. Um, now, that still doesn't... Um, that still doesn't tell us if we've got an issue with our starter motor and it still doesn't tell us if we've got an issue with our battery yet but at least we now know that our alternator and our wires are definitely okay sorted right what i did is i just left the battery on or the lights on for a couple of seconds um actually we can actually show you all this because it's uh because it's wireless so we just got we just got it on now I turn my lights on and look at that just within a second within a see if I can get it all in within a second I'm just turning on the lights ready lights are on and lock goes down to nine volts the battery is baggered but we've still got a variable here we know the battery's gone which is good but we could still have an issue between oh, well, the starter motor or the you know the wire going to the starter motor as well. Now again, I doubt it, but there's always a possibility. But what we have to do first is we have to replace the battery because that battery just isn't good enough. You can see it goes down to seven odd volts just within a second of turning on the battery. So when I try and start it, the engine turns and it's gone down to three volts um so that's what's happening to him as he's driving the battery does recover but that that's just like a ghost voltage um i wouldn't really mind i wouldn't really worry about that uh so yeah new battery needed sorted right so what i've done is i've done what it asked we did charge it up and uh, as you can see boom replace battery so that's what, you know, it just kind of warns you. It tells you a bit about it, exactly what's going on, what it actually found. And again, we can print the results. We can uh, send it to the customer by email. You know, we can do lots of stuff. But it's just, it, it, what I think it does is sometimes it just kind of gives you a, um, you know, like a safety one. It says, right, okay, look, just, just charge the battery and let's test it again. 
uh, rather than just kind of saying first right it's bad or whatever so it i, I do kind of like it it's you know the, the the system that it's in place um it just depends on the battery and how it actually finds it sometimes it does say replace straight away sometimes it will say you know a bad cell or whatever the case may be but in this case it just said look charge up again and let's test it we did our test we did our test with the actual uh, clamp meters on that's another thing i like about this what you can actually do is when you come back out of it and we go home you can see the digital meter here and that's what i was actually testing with my amp clamp and oh and with my um oh we can actually do both which is handy um yeah it's off zero and amp clamp now i really do like that let me just oh, of course it's not going to start is it let me get the jump pack on it and start it well what i'll actually do is i will um i will put the new battery in and we'll just go through this feature i just quickly jumped it and it's putting just over 11 amps into it just ticking over so it'll be interesting to see what the new battery actually does also make sure though once you take everything off and you clean it um, you clean everything essentially now there's a couple of tools you can get this goes over the battery pole the wire brush inside there and cleans that even though it's new it's always a good thing just to clean you take the top of this off which can i do one-handed nope and you have a wire brush in there which allows you to get inside the battery terminal so always a good idea just to clean everything but also make sure depending on your vehicle don't just disconnect your battery because some vehicles have, especially the modern vehicles, they have memory saves. They have all sorts of stuff that you have to put special tools on because otherwise, depending on your car, it might not start afterwards. So be very, very careful to just disconnecting a battery on modern cars. Right, boom, look at the difference. That's our new battery on. We are higher voltage and a lot lower amp. So that means the alternator isn't working as hard. That means the battery is obviously all the cells and everything in the battery are a lot better. So you can just see by having, you know, not so much maybe this equipment, but some sort of equipment, just the difference. So you can imagine that's put in at tick over like it is now. It's just ticking over. That was put in over 11 amps in, nearly 12 amps. And it was only 13 and a half volts it was able to put into the battery. So it was it was basically struggling. Well, not struggling, because obviously the alternator can produce more than that. But it was the battery was struggling to kind of take the power in. This battery now is just ticking over, and the alternator is just ticking over. And boom, with this, you can see straight away, really quickly and easy, it's sorted. It would be nice if they had a little print screen now where you could actually print this or send it to the customer. I would kind of like that uh, feature in it. But I'm guessing that's just maybe software, so that might be easy to actually add. Because it'd be nice to show the customer before and after, uh, you know, the difference. Right, so another question for you to answer down in the comments. Why was I putting the amp clamp on the negative side of the battery, not the positive side? Answers down below. Sorted.